The crisis at the border was the subject of a press conference by New York City's congressional representatives yesterday at Foley Square. Uh, Brooklyn and Queens Congressman Hakeem Jeffries was among those speaking out about the conditions at the detention centers. Congressman Jeffries joining us this morning. By the way, he is the House Democratic Caucus Chair. Good morning to you, Congressman. Morning. Thanks for being with us. When you were standing there giving this press conference, did you have any inkling prior to this, the conditions that, that the migrants were facing? Well, based on some reports that we had been getting in the previous few weeks, we knew that the conditions were deteriorating uh, and that there was sort of an inhumanity to what many of the young children were experiencing. Uh, in the previous week, it had become clear that there were instances where there was no food, no medicine, you know, no adequate um, toiletries, no diapers, no soap, things of this nature in what essentially were detention camps where you had young children being held in cages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we all felt it was important for the American people to have an understanding of what's taking place because the American people are fundamentally good and we believe will not tolerate this. So, so what is the actual solution to this? And we asked Congressman Nadler this yesterday. What do you think? Well, in the last week, there was a humanitarian aid uh, package of resources that was provided to uh, the administration because they were claiming that they did not have the resources in order to adequately take care of these children. Many of us believe that that was not necessarily the case. That said, Congress passed, I think it was $4.6 billion in assistance. Mm -hmm. Part of the issue that we have is that the children are being held uh, by Border Patrol agents. They're supposed to only be held for 72 hours and then transferred to the custody of the Health and Human Services. So why the hold up though? And are we hearing what you want to hear from the president about this? I mean, he did mention the Border Controls are, pa are patriots and I'm certain many of them obviously are, but at the same time, the squalor conditions that exist are, are just not acceptable. They're not acceptable, and increasingly, many of us are concerned that the issue is that cruelty is the point, that the dehumanization of these migrants is the point, that the family separation is, in fact, the point that the administration has concluded, and, in fact, members of the administration have said this in the past, that they are trying to deter individuals who are largely coming from the Central American Northern Triangle countries of Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras from seeking asylum in the United States of America, in part perhaps by projecting these images of what conditions their children are likely to confront if they reach the United States of America. That's very sad. And if overcrowd, which, you know, it's, it's evident when you see the pictures that overcrowding is the issue of some migrants who are left in standing room only cells, we're told for weeks at a time. So is there interest in building, and we're also hearing that tent, tent facilities or tent cities are supposed to be built around these detention centers. If overcrowding is the problem, shouldn't the attention be focused more on that area and, and, and building out these facilities to accommodate the influx of migrants? Well, we have to make sure that there are adequate facilities. We have to make sure that the Customs and Border Patrol agents have adequate resources and are adequately staffed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We also want to make sure that there's adequate immigration judges to process these asylum right. claims. And in a bipartisan way, I think Congress can work with the administration to solve this problem if the administration wants to solve the problem. We clearly recognize that we have a broken immigration system. Uh, we need comprehensive immigration reform. We should do it in a very bipartisan way. We also need to address the humanitarian situation that exists in Central America as well as the violent situation that exists in Central America. Those three countries, Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras, are amongst the five most violent countries in the world. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the challenge that we confront. Jennifer mentioned uh, that we had um, Judiciary Chairman uh, Jerry Nadler on yesterday and with Robert Mueller coming on July 17th to testify before uh, your committee. He was saying that even though we feel we might have all the information that was in uh, the report that came out. He still wants to hear Mueller say it or even expound upon it. Do you think that will happen? I think so, and I think that's the right way to go. You know, there's a difference between the book and the movie. Many Americans, because they are living check to check, day to day, week to week, won't have necessarily the time or ability to read through a 400-plus page report that is filled with legalese. 
but the American people deserve to know the results of the investigation and perhaps the best way to bring that about is for Bob Mueller to have an opportunity to tell the story to the American people about what he uncovered as it relates to Russia's interference with our election, the attack on the democracy, his conclusion that the Trump campaign welcomed Russia's interference in the election, that's quite unfortunate. He'll be able to elaborate upon that. More than four pages that we got from Barr. Certainly more than the spin uh, that we received from the Attorney General, which was quite unfortunate and probably served to confuse the American people. We just want Bob Mueller to tell it straight to the American people and for the representatives of the American people, Democrats and Republicans, to be able to ask questions so that the information can get out. All right. And I know that uh, dear to your heart is affordable housing mm -hmm. and NYCHA gotcha. is a big concern. What, what are you seeking? What needs to be done? This as we have this new head of NYCHA coming on, who will be gone on the weekends, by the way, uh, Gregory Visiting Russ. Visiting his family in right, Minnesota, exactly. right? Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. Well, you know, we have an affordable housing crisis in New York City. The, the demand for affordable housing greatly exceeds the supply. And the fundamental question that we all have to grapple with is that will New York City be a place simply for the wealthy and the well-off? Or can it continue to be a place for working families and young people and artists, middle-class folks, senior citizens? The, the broad diversity of the city across race and gender and religion and socioeconomic status, artistic engagement, that's what makes this city the greatest city in the world. We don't want to lose that. And unless we address the affordable housing crisis, in part by strengthening our public housing development, which is at the core of affordable housing, mm. uh, we're, we're at risk of being a very different city. So are you city. introducing legislation? Are you... Well, what we believe is that if we can reach an infrastructure agreement with the president, mm. that part of what we need to do is make sure if it's a trillion dollar plus infrastructure plan, at least $70 billion mm -hmm. uh, goes to upgrading and dealing with the maintenance and repair needs of our public housing developments, which are crumbling, uh, and where you have people, in many cases, living in squalor oh, yeah. in one of the wealthiest cities in the world. That's the quite unfortunate. Divide that we're seeing even more That's right. day by day, right? Congressman Jeffries. Good to have you with us as always. Happy July 4th. Where are Happy you going to be? July 4th. Coney Island? Is that where you're going to be? I'll be in Coney Island <laughs> uh, where there will be fireworks. Great. And it's one of the best places to be. It's one of the world's greatest playgrounds and has some of the world's greatest people. I'm All looking right. forward to it. Great Thank to you, you Congressman. Appreciate right. it. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Laura.